Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 188 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case in which we literally blew it. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous coronary bypass graft surgery who presented for PCI of a right coronary artery CTO in an attempt to treat angina. He did have a bypass graft to the right coronary artery. However, that bypass graft had stents in the proximal and distal segment, and the bypass graft was occluded. This is the dual injection. The proximal right coronary artery has an ambiguous proximal cap with small bridging collaterals. There is some feeling of the proximal LED with some septals and maybe some feeling of the PDA, although this is not uh, the most clear image and a lot of the feeling of the right coronary artery is happening through undergrade ipsilateral collaterals. And this is the dual injection in the RAO projection. Once again, there are some septals, maybe there's some connection to the PDA and there is uh, um, undergrade feeling through collaterals of the mid and distal right coronary artery. So we have a CTO with heavy calcification. There is an ambiguous proximal cap. The length is about 30 millimeters. The distal vessel had a bifurcation on the distal cap with this large acute marginal branch that was part of the ipsilateral collateral network. And then collaterals were both ipsilateral as well as contralateral from the LED. The plan here was to start with undergrade wiring if we get decipher the course of the vessel and if that was a successful try with retrograde crossing we did not want to use undergrade dissection re-entry because there was this large marginal through which uh, there was collateral flow to the RCA and including that branch might uh, adversely impact the stability of the patient. So we start with a soft polymer jacketed filter XTA guide wire. We did place a body wire into this ipsilateral epicardial collateral and these are different projections. The wire seems to be moving in sync with the mid-right coronary artery. But what we have found is that for RCA, especially mid-RCA, the lateral projection can be very useful. It can really help uh, visualize uh, clearly the course of the vessel. So to our surprise, actually, when we did the lateral projection, we saw that there was... Um, movement of the wire along the course of the vessel so the wire seemed to be going in the course of the vessel and we did have this tortuous ipsilateral epicardial collateral that was going from the proximal RCA to the mid uh, uh, segment of this large acute marginal branch and then filling distally the mid and distal right coronary artery. We did, unfortunately, multiple attempts to advance more wires. The microcaster could come a little further down, but we were actually never able to make a lot of progress in advanced equipment further down to the right coronary artery. That was as far as we could get and as far as we get the microcatheter. So after multiple attempts, we decided to give a try to go retrograde through the septal collaterals. We did uh, surfing and we also did contrast guided injection and there was not really a very good connection of the septals with the PDA. We then tried to go through the occluded saphenous vein graft and we were actually able to advance easily using a polymer jacketed pilot 200 wire almost all the way to the distal vein graft but there was an old stand placed from the vein graft across the distal anastomosis into the native vessel and uh, that uh, could not be crossed. After all this, we decided to take a picture undergrade, and to our surprise, we saw that there was actually a perforation in the mid-RCA. It is unclear when this happened. Actually, during the retrograde attempts, we lost the position of the wire in the CTO vessel. But here we have now a perforation on the right coronary artery. What to do next? The first step is to inflate a balloon, but we didn't really have much space over there in the proximal RCA, and moreover, the collaterals of the vessel were actually going through this ipsilateral epicardial, and if we were inflating a balloon, we might be causing significant ischemia of the mid and distal right coronary artery. We did a brief retrograde attempt again in case we were able to advance a guide wire into the PDA, but unfortunately, this was not successful. But fortunately, after a few minutes and after an echo did not show any effusion, 
we actually had a spontaneous sealing of the perforation. So we removed the equipment and we administered protamine. Once again, ECHO did not show any effusion, but the challenge of ECHO in patients with previous bypass is that one may have loculated effusions that may not be as apparent on the ECHO as a free-floating pericardial effusion. Several lessons from, the ca from this case. The first one is that proximal cap ambiguity can predispose to perforation. It is important not to try to advance equipment until the ambiguity is clarified. In this case, it appeared as if the wire was moving along the course of the vessel, but retrospectively, the wire might have gone through a bridging collateral, which potentially led to the perforation. If uh, there is a wire perforation, quite often it may seal by prolonged balloon inflation and reversing intercoagulation, and this is what happened in this particular case. After this had happened, we stopped for various reasons. First of all, because we did have a complication, and complication is one of the reasons to stop the procedure unless continuation can help take care of the complication. And uh, the other reason is that we had kind of exhausted our crossing options. The other option at this point would be to go retrograde through the epilateral epicardial collateral, but this would have been a very high-risk procedure in this patient who already has had a complication. So we decided to stop. Potentially, the procedure could be reattempted in a few months depending on the patient's clinical condition. Thank you.